Well, we have a nice bubbly froth on top of the water and it's rust in color. So I'm thinking that the thing has worked. Let's pull out and take a look. Well, a little bit of aluminum wire worked quite well. What is this thing? Jeremy Novak and Miramisha Bill both came up with a very good answer. It's for setting hollow rivets. Now depending on how you want it to look, you put the pin through and then you set the cap over the top of it. Just like so. And once again, this is a make do so that I can do a demonstration. The pin is dimple. It has a dot in the center of it. That's designed to take a hollow rivet and expand it out and stake it in place. bottom punch is flat, so I'm going to use that as up against the head, the cap, so that I end up with a nice looking rivet. I think it did a pretty nice job. A little tool that came with the rivets has two domed punches so that you put one in there, set the pin in it, put this over the top. hit it with a hammer. This works, but I think this is much cooler. It needs to be mounted on a board so that when I push on it, I've got more control over it and I don't have to try and hold, hold it with both hands. But that'll be for another day. Thanks a lot for watching. When I was a kid, I was a Cub Scout. My dad was the den leader. We did all kinds of craft projects because that's what Cub Scouts did back in the old days. One of the things that we did was leather working. Leather working requires some tools. And since we were kind of working bucks down, uh, dad came up with some tools that were inexpensive but worked quite well. Let me show you one of them. Dad took a table fork and a pair of cutters cut the fork off so that it just had a little bit of the tines left. Flatten the fork out. 
Now I don't remember Dad having a grinder at the time, so I bet he used a file, but I've got a grinder, so I'm going to use the grinder. Round off the tines so they're all the same length. Carving them to a point. Here's where I'm going to take a file tip. Looks like I got a little bit of burr thrown up on there by the file, or by the grinder. I'm just going to take a three cornered file and knock that burr off. Now the outer tines are just a little bit wider than the inner ones, so I'm going to narrow those down so that they're all about the same width. to knock the burr off. I don't think it'll affect the way the tool works. Good idea to just not leave sharp edges on something that you want to hold in your hand. Oh, these are the ones that I showed you in the video but they look a little too nice to go chopping on. So I found a 15 center at the flea market, made the adjustments on that. Kind of funny to think that the stuff that I used to get for free because it was junk is now sold by Hobby Lobby and it costs you eight bucks a bag. Since we were doing lacing, we went along the edge of the piece of leather. It makes four nice little straight holes in a good line. And you stick the last tine in. And you cut three more. And three more until you go down the full length of the, of the piece of leather that you're going to lace together. You can also use this for stitching, but I think you'd want to have the points on the uh, fork just a little bit tinier. And you could reduce the size of those with the three 
cornered file to bring them down to the point where they would fit a little better. That's what you can do with an old fork. This one's a stainless steel fork. The other two were a silver plate, which means that they were brass with a silver plate over them. And I thought not only would they uh, be a little too soft, but the other ones look just too nice to screw up. If you need to repair a moderate sized defect like this knot hole, then a patch can be a great idea. I'm going to lay in a little piece of, well, this is actually sported beach. With the patch in place, knife around it carefully. Then excavate a little shy of the thickness of the patch. A router plane or powered router will help you quickly get to a consistent depth. Keep checking with your patch to sneak up on a snug fit. Glue the patch in and allow to cure. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Look at it, folks.